All right, guys, I want to make a quick video here just talking about uh, the receiver end plates here on AR-15. So that the receiver end plate on the AR-15 is a common place that people uh, like mounting slings like our, sim our simple sling to. And uh, nothing wrong with that. Um, the thing to keep in mind, though, is that as, as you're mounting a sling to it, you're potentially creating a lot more force on it than, than it was originally intended uh, and giving it the opportunity to, to introduce some rotational forces uh, the way that the sling might get pulled on. So it's just really important, um, even more so if your sling is mounted there, to make sure that your castle nut is on there securely. And by securely, we mean following the, the actual military specification for how the castle nut is intended to be attached. So the, the, the castle nut is intended to be torqued down to 38 to 42 foot-pounds. Um, this is something that a lot of manufacturers skimp on, and uh, some of them are even using parts that, that won't allow you to securely stake that, that castle nut in place. So we wanted to show you kind of a couple of, of examples of that and, and how you can fix it, and, and hopefully how we can help with that. So we've got three different castle nuts here. Um, we've got uh, the first one here is from Ford Control Designs. This is the CNF, the castle nut Ford Control Designs. This is a, an upgraded castle nut that we're going to be offering as a replacement for anyone who might need a, a, to replace their subpar castle nut. So there's a couple unique things about it. Uh, the first thing is that they've added a fourth location uh, for, the, for the staking notches to engage versus the traditional three on what would be considered a mil-spec castle nut. So what that means is that there's a, a pretty good chance that as you're installing it, you'll actually be able to get two locations where you could potentially stake into the into the end plate instead of you know two uh, like you would get on a normal nut that, that only has those three locations. So odds are as it's installed, you'll get three timed up and, and that's an additional location that you can add. The other thing that they've done is they've actually deepened the notches uh, so that the material can displace in them. So if you look at how how far in those notches go compared to some of the other options that are out there, you'll see that some of these are cut pretty short. You can see here, well, let's use one that wasn't staked. You can see that a lot of these have um, different angles to them, different depths to them, different thicknesses to them, and that they're really not all created equal kind of line this up here on camera. So if you can imagine how much material you can displace into this guy versus this one, you know, that's that's pretty significant. So getting it to stay on there is, is pretty important because if that backs out, um, you're talking about, you know, shutting the gun down. So if you're gonna mount the uh, the sling on there to that location, it's even more important. If, if, if you're not gonna mount it on there, well, you know, it's, it's still good to, to understand, you know, where a manufacturer might have cut corners on you or if you're assembling it yourself, maybe something you ever looked before. So we're, we're sticklers on, on getting those end plates staked uh, after they've been up, to, up to, torqued up to that 38 to 42 foot pounds. And uh, so we wanted to kind of showcase why, uh, why some of these, these products that you might have out there, that you might see out there, aren't necessarily good ones. Um, and that, you know, if you have them, maybe you want to replace it. So this is the one that we're actually going to replace here uh, on this arrow lower. So we're going to get this one ripped off. We're going to put the, uh, the four control designs uh, CNF on instead, um, and and kind of and go through that. So uh, a little bit about how to do that. Um, one is you need to have a wrench that you can actually torque. So these common cheapy wrenches that um, you know a lot of us have, um, these guys don't have a location even for you to insert a torque wrench into to to get this thing up to a spec. So with it having this this little short inch uh, three inch. Um, tail on it, you know, generating enough leverage on that thing to actually get into that, that 40 foot pounds range, um, probably, probably not going to happen. Um, so these wimpy little wrenches, um, you know, while they're convenient and they're cheap, um, you know, you're really not doing yourself a, a favor with one of those. So what you want to get yourself is some kind of a wrench that you can get your a torque wrench into. So this is the Ford Control Designs um, wrench that's offered. Um, they, they actually laser engrave the spec on there, so you can you can you know if if, if you're blanking on it, it'll remind you as you go to do it. Uh, and this is a wrench that has three lugs on one side and two lugs on the other. So if you do have one of those sling mounts that adds some material around here and might limit the uh, amount of wrench that you can get onto the castle nut as you're rotating it. Um, this is a, a unique product that really solves that problem for you. So no matter what 
you might be doing, you know you can get at least uh, a couple of the of, of the notches engaged as you're rotating it up to spec. Um, but it's just a, an incredibly well-made product that we're, 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 we're glad that we can offer that. So this is the wrench that we're going to use. And while you're doing that, you need to make sure that you're holding your, your lower securely. So you need to have a block um, that, that holds it securely. You know, one of the more common, uh, inexpensive ways to do that is with some kind of a, a, uh, a lower, lower receiver block. The problem is that if, if we attach to the lower receiver here and we're torquing back here, you know, we've got this whole hollow aluminum assembly that you're introducing a lot of stress through. So that's actually not necessarily preferred um, for the amount of torque, you know, that, that we're going to be getting up on here. It's a, it's, a, it's a better idea to get something like the Geisley reaction block um, where you can actually insert your buffer tube into this device. Now, this is only going to work with, with the mil spec diameter buffer tubes. It's not going to work with, with commercial spec buffer tubes, but honestly, yeah, you don't want one of those anyway. Uh, but the principle behind this is that you can insert the buffer tube itself directly into the block. And this is going to hold it securely while you're torquing, you know, here, um, you're, you're not introducing any stress into the lower and then potentially cracking it or, or damaging it or anything like that. So with this, you know, you, you can, you can, you can torque this guy, um, you lock it down, get your wrench in there, do your work. Um, but it also gives you the ability to, to hold, to hold the, the lower receiver in different orientations while you're working on it. So, uh, if you, if you're, you know, installing a bolt catch or something like that and in, in, into the, in the lower, um, this receiver block really, um, really does, does, does a lot of good for you. So that's what we're going to use as well. Uh, and make sure we're, we're, we're getting up to, to the torque that we need without potentially damaging the, the lower receiver in the process. We'll go ahead and insert our half inch drive torque wrench. And that was scary with just how easily that guy came loose. At this point, we don't need the wrench anymore. We can loosen this up, generate a little bit of space, get that guy out, and that comes out remarkably easily. So as you're working on this, uh, what you gotta keep in mind is on, on the other side of your, of your, of your takedown pin, you've got that spring and that detent that's in here. So just be careful um, not to let that thing come flying out unexpectedly uh, on yourself. We'll back off the castle nut. I'm gonna give this a, a little bit of a rotation. Capture the spring. Got to feel it in my fingertips there. All right. And uh, I can get that guy out of there while I while I finish this work and not have to worry about dropping at least that part. All right, probably should have done this before, but it doesn't really matter. We'll just do it now. We're gonna depress our buffer retainer pin and get our buffer and spring assembly out. And at this point, we're gonna we're gonna start to to back this off and get our buffer retaining pin out. All right, we've got these parts and we'll set these aside for later as well. All right, so what we've done just off camera, we threw in a, uh, one of the lower receiver blocks. This will kind of hold us, the, the, the lower receiver in place while we maneuver with it. We've thrown some Aeroshell 64 on the threads here so that the, the castle nut itself in the lower receiver will get the benefit of that grease as it goes on. We've got our castle nut behind the end plate. We've got this held in place. We're just going to go ahead and start threading this in uh, just loosely. And we're going to stop once we get kind of close to where our, our detent hole is going to be. We don't want to get that covered up. We'll take our, our spring and our detent, get that guy back in, hold it down, and then we'll do that last rotation. So what we're, what we're checking for, right, we want to make sure that the lip of the tube, the lip of the tube actually covers the back half of the, the detent, but it isn't actually pressing in so that this can travel freely and, and work as it needs to. So our tube's in as, as far as it needs to be. We'll, we'll square it away once we get back to the other vise here. Um, at this point, we could probably rotate just a little bit past. We'll open up the gap again for the spring. We'll drive that in on top of the detent, and we'll hold that back in, in position, capture it, making sure that we're not bending it. 
kind of hard to do when you're not even looking at it. All right, so we've got that in there. And while that's kind of held down now, I can just kind of freely hand tighten this guy into position. So again, we're gonna switch over to the different vices. Um, we're gonna get this, this guy up to torque the way it needs to be, but we've got the, um, the buffer detent back into position. We've got the takedown spring and detent back into position, and we're ready to start torquing this thing down. All right, so we've got, uh, we've got the other vice block the reaction block back in the vise. We've got the assembly on the castle nut, the end plate, everything is back into position. We've got our Ford Control Designs wrench. Uh, we, we've got the three lugs engaged here. I'll just press it back so that I can kind of keep it in position. Thumb tighten these down and now I can go ahead insert the torque wrench and get this guy up to the 38 to 42 foot pounds that it needs to be. So we'll set our torque wrench Up to 38. Lock it into position. All right, we've got it inserted 90 degree angle perpendicular to the orientation of the wrench. And we can go ahead and start tightening while we keep an eye on the, the alignment of the lower receiver here. So this is this vice block is holding securely under the buffer tube. What we want to make sure is that as we're turning it, that the lower receiver itself isn't rotating around. Um, so I, I'll have one hand on each and create a little bit of a little bit of English here, just keeping this guy in position, torquing this until I get my pop. All right, there it was. So I don't know if you can tell in the video, but. There's a fair amount of, of torque that went into to doing that. And the idea that you're going to do that with one of these shoddy little, these little six inch wrenches here, um, that, that, that's just, just, just not really all that likely. So we can go ahead and pop this guy out and show you what we've got here. So what we've got, we've got one staking location, two staking locations, and three staking locations. So on a normal mill spec nut, at this point we'd only have two. Now we've got all three, right? We can go ahead and hammer this thing home um, and we'll show you how to do that next. All right, so for staking this guy into position, what we're gonna use is the Mayhew 532nd center punch. Um, this was the uh, prefer preferred tool of Will Larson and uh, he's one of the best armors for the Air 15 out there. So it's one we, we certainly approve of as well. Um, some people use the automatic center punches for these. Um, not really a fan. Uh, a, a good five thirty seconds punch that, that you can get, you can get in there and, and drive appropriately with a hammer is definitely definitely our preference. So to get started, you know we we've got the torque where we want it. We're going to position the center tip of the punch right in the center meat of 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 the receiver end plate here. So uh, right between each each of the two sides and and right in the middle of the depth of it as well. So what we're going to do, we're going to kind of set the tip of that in there. Kind of eyeball that as best as you can. And, and we're just going to give it a tap and see if we're happy with it. So odds are you won't be able to uh, to necessarily see that. Uh, maybe maybe it's picking up in the light. Okay. Um, but we're, I'm pretty happy with the location of that. Um, so I'll, I'll refine that. That little dimple I made, and you can see it's already enough to, to hold the tip of that. And we're going to get started here. All right, now you should be able to, to see that a little bit more clearly. But we're going to start driving that material right into that notch now. You can see it started to started to deform. We're going to keep it keep keep going. All right, so you see the depth that we've created there, right? That there's a, there's a good amount of metal, right? You can see. Remember what those pictures were like earlier for for how deep that notch went. Um, this is what we're looking for, right? And we've got we've this is one we're we're gonna do the um, the next two locations, and you can be sure that 
when, when that's all done and, and two or th preferably three spots like you can on this model, you know that that thing is really not going to go anywhere. Now the only downside people will, will sometimes cite about staking a castle nut is that it's difficult to remove. Uh, honestly, you can just get on the other side of this with a with a punch and drive the material back out and, and loosen it that way. So we've done it plenty of times. It's really not that hard. It's it's far more important than your your gun not kind of randomly quit on you because a part rattled loose while you know you had it you know, when you're driving around with it or just the recoil of it over time or the force of a sling pulling on that end plate. It's much more important to keep that thing secure. So. That's how we recommend to do it. You can go back through and touch this up a little with a little blue pen when you're done. Um, but make sure you, your your castle nuts have those those good deep notches that your end plate is is properly staked into it. That it isn't just some cosmetic thing. That it's actually a nice deep uh, deep deep set that's in there where you've got you know a good amount of metal displaced into that notch. Uh, that's what you're looking for, and, and that's what we recommend. So hope you guys found this useful. Uh, this should be the first of, of a few videos coming out just showing you some of this stuff. So hope you liked it. Thanks.